Welcome to your weekly program, Bal Ahdan, the show that brings the other side of Arab American to your living room. With the collapse of uh, our economy and, uh, as, as they say, the, uh, you know, the collapse of a capital system and free market, and people are looking for a different alternative to, you know, safe capitalism as we know it. And a lot of people, a lot of banking and financial institutions look at the Islamic model, uh, no interest. And, uh, and now here in the Twin Cities, we have a lot of ethnic groups, Muslim community now, almost 200,000 and Arab, Arab uh, American now is about 10,000. And so a lot of business now are paying attention to the new majority, the ethnic and the ethnic market. We have here Adil Elhoni. He is uh, assistant vice president in, uh, with Wells Fargo for uh, uh, emerging market, paying attention to, to that trend. Welcome to Bal Ahdan, uh, Adil. Uh, thank thank you, you so much for coming. Uh, every business now is looking for a creative way for mm -hmm. keeping uh, in touch with the, uh, the demographics. <laughs> you know, who know Mubarak? I mean, uh, Obama won because of the ethnic and the, the change in the demographics of the American people, mm -hmm. a lot of ethnic um, uh, immigrants and all that. So I, I, as, a, as a bank here now, uh, what are the things that you are doing really to, to kind of uh, look at uh, uh, those uh, emerging markets like Arab American, Muslim American, mm -hmm. all that? Mm -hmm. Well, with, the, with Wells Fargo, they, they have promoted uh, opportunities for people to reflect the community, so meaning they would uh, not only hire employees that reflect the community, but they would instill the values in the corporate culture to reflect that the communities that they yes. serve. Definitely. And, and for me, it was uh, exciting as an Arab American to look at that market segment because traditionally, nobody necessarily would pay attention to such a small consumer segment. Mm -hmm. You would look at the African American, the Hispanic, the Asian as traditional models, mm -hmm. but then to actually go into subcultures, into the community, for example, if we're looking at the Twin City, is that we're trying to act locally, uh -huh. even though we're a national company. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so that's, that's where we're looking at. And act locally. Exactly. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, uh, a lot, the relationship between uh, people and bank, it, it, it changes across culture. Everybody has a different value, mm -hmm. different way to, to relate to bank. And, and, and so uh, do you get into that and find out how the Arabs or how the Muslims look at bank and um, something bad, something like government? And, so, you know, it, that, that's like, interesting you yeah, mentioned that. Yeah. that and, 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 and it occurs in the Arab as well as I noticed in the uh, Hispanic culture yeah. where there is that distrust, yeah. where there is that uh, mattress money type of, of, of mentality where, yeah. where you want to save. And, yeah. and, and, that, and that's why we look at gaining trust step by step. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're talking, for example, I had a, a, a client a couple of years back when I was actually, um, before I got my fancy title, when I was actually working on the streets, on Lake Street specifically in Minneapolis, where um, we would have clients that would come in, we would sit down and actually discuss their family, discuss their, um, what they had for dinner last night, what they were, this, and, and that type of business, that type of interaction, yeah. maybe me and you are more familiar because of our cultures, but yeah. to get that part of it is, is not so natural for somebody that's not from the culture, somebody that doesn't see. see. So for me, that's a step towards gaining the trust is how do you converse? How do you interact with a person? Over the long run, they will look for you not only for that type of advice, but you'll be their financial consultant, as opposed to just coming in there and doing a transaction. You become a friend. <laughs> a you become officer. a part <laughs> of their extended family. Exactly. Uh -huh. Whether it's, I mean, and, and that's where we look at Wells Fargo is that we attempt, even with that, with our side, with our uh, um, influence in the markets, to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, with uh, our clients. You know. Uh, I've always uh, wonder about uh, some of the program, financial program that offered mm -hmm. to the people, like one of the program called uh, Wealth Creation. That's like a department. I was dealing mm -hmm. with a bank that has a department called Wealth, wealth creation. creation. And this is for wealthy people who want to be more wealthy. Exactly. But how do you sell this to the Somali, a uh, Muslim conservative, and you say, we're going to create your wealth? Mm -hmm. And deep mm -hmm. inside, uh, the only person who, the only one who can create wealth is God. In, 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 <laughs> in when you're dealing culture. with cultures, yeah. exactly. I think um, you bring a very solid point. And then uh, th there is that, again, not only with, with a Muslim culture or Arab culture, but we see that in different cultures where that faith issue yeah. becomes more important in the transaction than, than, than the actual way that we're thinking traditionally about banking. Um, with Wells Fargo, we have approximately 80 different business lines. 
um, that deal either with wealth creation, some of them deal with first time home buyers, mm -hmm. um, depending on the focus. But again, it comes back for me is that step of understanding before. So if I assume what you want, Ahmed, and I assume what I'm going to offer you and I keep on speaking to you what I think you want, I'm not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. That's why the initial profiling of a customer and sitting down and understanding, that's what leads to the success. Look at Minneapolis, for example, look at the last 10 years, look at the immigrant communities in general, what they've been able to accomplish and mm -hmm. do. That has a lot to do with what? With financing they were able to attain through the communities that are around. Mm -hmm. We have specific laws, again, we have Community Reinvestment Act, for example, which was a law enacted by Congress in the 70s, mid-70s, saying that, by the way, you think you can collect money from certain communities, right? And this doesn't apply only to, to the company I work for, for all financial institutions. Yeah. By the way, you have to reinvest in those communities because yeah. it's easy for me to get from low-income communities and reinvest in the wealthy communities. Yeah. But how about if I reinvest back in the communities that and I'm actually serving? There's a lot to uh, the Really? How yeah, do, yeah. How yeah. do you measure that? How you quantify they, that? They qu it's, very, it's regulated by the OCC, the Office of uh, Com. Really? Yep. Because it, it, uh, some people were, uh, some banks here in Twin Cities, mm -hmm. was, uh, I'm not going to mention their name, were accused of being preying on, uh, on, on low income by uh, promoting check-in, free check-in, free check-in, mm -hmm. but they get their money from them by late fees. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. Their income was one year was $20 million just from uh, late fees. Wow. So wow. that's intentionally designed to, to promote your, uh, your, the kind of service you know mm -hmm. 40% are going to be the I think the key is education. Mm -hmm. The key is programs. Uh, uh, we have a specific program, but I, I do beyond my work at Wells Fargo. I do volunteerism in the community. But the education part, the hands-on banking, if somebody doesn't understand what credit is, doesn't understand what a checking account is able to do, doesn't understand um, uh, how to go access your funds that you're eligible to without having these penalties, for example, if you don't have that initial education, and like you said, you're coming from a society that you're distrusting, mm -hmm. what is this going to do to you? It's going to even alienate you more from institutions. So what we try to bring is from A to Z from the beginning is go into middle schools, go into um, uh, communities from a younger age and start not only educating the students, but making the, uh, the students educate the parents that might not have that level of sophistication. You're going to have situations where you're going to have people that are not happy with their financial institutions without naming names, but in essence, it, it, it falls back on education and responsibility of the institutions as well as the community to go around and help. And in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a time when we have a major financial crisis, mm -hmm. uh, probably the, the, the financial institution who did the things they do, not just with ethnic, but with all customers. Exactly. You really, you use them as a customer, you're mm -hmm. a consultant, not just to try to lend the money and take the loan and sell it to someone. Those are the ones who survived this uh, downturn. N not only survived and succeeded, but they're the ones going to grow mm -hmm. over the short and long term. Mm -hmm. If you notice, like you said, if I'm looking at the short term, I'm looking at just making you a transaction right now and making you know, my profit off, off of you right yeah. now uh -huh. is different than if I'm looking at you as not only a customer right now, but I'm, I'm looking to cover all your business. If you're going to to uh, an insurance agent nowadays, a doctor, for any, any service. You expect to get the best service and you expect to, in the long term, trust the person. Mm -hmm. So that's what, what, what I'm saying is when you're providing a certain financial service, it's, it's in a consultant form. It shouldn't be just based on that one transaction. Why that you the have. financial services were slow catching on this, which is something in marketing and in all other business caught on a long time ago? The financial institution was very traditional, slow, and conservative in their model of dealing with customers. With customers, if you historically, late, if you have fees, and if you get this, we're going to well, send uh, an officer. Well, if you think <laughs> take your dog away <laughs> from you. If you think historically, banks or, or weren't viewed as 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 in a way bankers or, or, or financial institutions were viewed as a place where you can go put your money. Yeah. Right. They would safeguard your money, and then you would go access. It. I mean, that was the basic. Exactly. That model over the last 10 years, yeah. uh, last 20 years through deregulation, through, has been opened and, and, and changed in so many ways. So when you look at a financial institution right now, they can look at you as a person and how to help you lead you from beginning to end. So meaning from you, your family, your children's college, they can help you plan your uh, retirement. And from that aspect, they needed to understand even more what makes you tick, mm -hmm. right? What makes Ahmed tick, what makes this community tick, what makes... And so the more...